Hey, welcome back to the Vinyl Village Garage. My name is John. This is the Great Pumpkin 1968 Firebird Restoration Project, all in a two-car garage, just because we can, I suppose. Now, the idea is to show you how it could be done in a two-car garage at home, because most of us, that's what we have to work with. We don't have the big, fancy facility. We don't have the big, fancy tools. We don't have a car lift, paint booth, etc. We're making it happen in the space that we have to work with. Heck, I built my very first car in the backyard of my parents' house. They didn't even have a garage. Well, that was a whole lot of you know, challenges that I don't want to talk about. I definitely learned a whole lot. And that's the point of this channel, sharing this information with you, my 20 some odd years, almost 30 years of building cars the right way, the wrong way. And now I'm going to call it the VVG way. I'm going to share that stuff with you to maybe expedite your process or prove to you that it can be done or build some confidence to jump out there and save that dream you have sitting in the garage. So with that being said, let's get down to the business here. Um, we're going to start doing some fill work here. We did a quarter skin on this car, basically we butt welded right here through the seams. So it needs some filler work, but Back of this door, it's 50 years old, not exactly 100% dead on. It's nice and it's close, but we can dial this in even better than factory, and I'm gonna show you the reason why. Check out this picture right here in particular. Man, do I absolutely love that car, but that's a different story for a different day. Why don't you take note of the white paint stripe that was on the parking lot for the parking marking, I guess lot, lines, whatever. Um, look at it, it's the rear quarter panel goes transitions into the door, transitions into the front fender. That line stays nice and straight. It doesn't go between the quarter panel and the door and then jump and then change heights. It stays nice and even. The reason being is the panels are adjusted great and they're on the exact same plane. And that's what we're getting down here and dialing this car in so I get the same results when it's done. We've got a nice even reflection down the side of the car and it doesn't take that much more energy or effort. And that's what we're gonna show you here today. Well, let's get things rolling here. Like I said, we had welded in this here. You can see some deviations if I can get the camera to focus, little imperfections in my weld, stuff like that. Not very much, but our, our door height to the quarter panel, I mean, within a 64th of an inch, super clean. You guys saw how that was done last video. If you haven't, go back and check it out. Trust me, that's very important to do that beforehand so you don't have to use nearly as much body filler. But we're gonna actually put body filler on both the quarter panel and the door at the same time. So if there is any kind of imperfections between the two of them, we'll be able to blend them into each of the panels and get to have that nice, even reflection. We're not gonna use very much filler. And again, not on this edge or this edge, only on the face of the panels here. Um, I got these little magnets in place because what I'm gonna do though, is when we put the body filler on, I'm actually gonna fill the gap between the door and the quarter and two spots. And then now I'm gonna try to leave an opening all the way down to the whole thing. Then we're all done, we're gonna sand it up. But the reason I'm gonna do that is I'm actually gonna bond the two together so when I'm block sanding, the door doesn't keep doing this as I'm sanding on it. So basically we're gonna kinda of glue the panels together temporarily. And then when we're done, we'll cut that loose and clean it all the edges up. So what we're gonna get into today, we're gonna to use some of the Duraglass filler here. I feel it's a little heavier duty since it's on the leading edge of the, the quarter panel and the door, if it hits it, I think it's a little more durable than regular body filler. It's probably overkill because I don't need that much, but I'd rather, have a little more of a durable filler on this edge. If we do have an incident where something bumps against it, maybe reduce the chance of chipping. And then I've got to do a little reconstructive surgery. You see this nice clean line in the quarter panel? Well, it kind of disappears here a little bit. And even the rear edge of the door, it's a little bit gone. So we're gonna work on reshaping that too, just the same. So anyway, let's get this thing all prepped and ready to put some body filler on. All right, and then how we're gonna prep the edges is we're just gonna key up, scuff, scratch, sand, whatever you're gonna call it. This is 80 grit sandpaper. I'm gonna hit the edges of the door of the quarter panel. Then I'll come back to my favorite red scotch bright and go a little further past that point. So good adhesion. We're just gonna cut this epoxy primer just enough to open the surface up so the body filler adheres or it sticks to it really good. But I don't need to sand all of the paint off of, just enough for I have a good adhesion. And this is just a little foam or medium density foam sanding block. The reason I use always I just always use sanding blocks. It really highlights all the areas that need some attention. And the same thing we did before, it might highlight any high spots in the metal that are gonna bleed through. So back to being below average, I might have to make one of those cheap sticks up saying it's okay to be below average. scuffed up pretty good. Now I'll go ahead and hit it with the red scotch brite pad to get all the low spots from the block. Now this doesn't take off a lot of paint, but it definitely opens up the face of the 
epoxy primer. Like I said, back to the whole word adhesion. You don't want this stuff falling off. You can see it's already happening and this door is moving all over the place as I'm trying to sand on. And that's part of the reason why we're going to glue them together with the filler so when I'm sanding this plane, it stays in place and so we'll cut it loose, but then when we put the door striker in, that's how we'll adjust the door when it's all said and done. Then we can dial it into our bodywork and have a nice even transition between the body panels. Okay. That should do it. Let me get some uh, body filler mixed up. All right, before we mix the filler up, I'm gonna wipe this down on my cat cloth here. Get all that ready to go. And I'm not mixing up a whole lot of putty here. Probably, oh, one and a half golf ball size. It's not a whole lot of goop on here. Probably more than I need. Um, but I have seen people put a whole lot more of this stuff on and be relatively durable. Actually, heck, I'm guilty of it years and years and years ago. I helped a friend rebuild a 64 Corvair Spider. If you want to call it rebuild, it was mostly made out of body filler, Bondo, street signs, whatever else you could find. It was a it was a mess, but I'm pretty sure Corvair came from the factory. The rest was in it anyway, but we sculpted that car back out of Bondo or body filler, and it's actually made it 20-some years, and it still looks... Really good. I'm not gonna say any names because maybe Terry wants to sell it. Oops. Anyway, um, nonetheless, you get the idea. This stuff actually holds up. It is way more durable than we get her credit for, but I like to use the least amount as possible for a couple reasons. One, it costs money to buy this stuff, and then two, I just you're not really meant to put it on that thick. It's only designed for such a thickness, but again, it holds up a lot better than we give it credit for. So. I got this all mixed up. Now, what I'm going to do first, though, I'm going to get this dialed in the height where I want it. And we're just going to put a glob and glue literally the quarter panel to the door. Um, all right. Now, let's come through here now and just kind of put a small pass on each side. Using the magnets kind of help hold it in place because obviously you've already seen it. It's wiggling around as I'm putting this stuff on here. I've got a small dent right here in the door that I want to fill in while we're at it. bought some of those metal spreaders, so I haven't quite decided whether I like them yet or not. Clean this out. Now, I'm not worried about what's falling in between the door and the quarter panel right now, because once I get the door opened up, I just sand all that out. give that about 15 20 minutes and see what it looks like all right here you go about 25 minutes later i stopped take a little bit of a lunch break because well i got hungry uh, guys gotta eat but here's where i bridge the gap there and i bridge the gap there it's not pretty but all it is, is now watch i can grab this door i can shake the entire car and this doesn't move the idea when i'm standing across the two planes then i can actually make them nice and level and you can see here this is primer bleeding through this stuff's really super thin you can see the area is a little bit darker. That's where actually the weld was at. So it's gonna, I think, do a pretty good job with one pass. But the reason I glue it together instead of just rely on the door latch, because the latch still allows the door to rattle. So how do you hold it in place? Well, 
This is about the best idea. I think I've seen someone else do it, so it's not my idea. I think I borrowed it, but just gonna share it again. I uh, don't know who to give credit to, but just, hey, keep this in mind. When we're done, take a little Sawzall blade, just my hand, cut it there, cut it there, pop the door loose, and you clean up all the filler off the leading and trailing edges here, and it should be good. But now I'll go ahead and block sand across the two of these, and let's check and see how that looks and see if we can actually reshape this body line too, just the same. Now this is just 80 grit sandpaper on my longer board. I'm using it so I can transition between the door and the quarter panel and hope this stands out pretty good. Here. You can still see the same thing. You know, we're running about, our, our body line is here and here. We're gonna work at an angle towards that body line and angle back towards this line, making X patterns across it. Not just going straight across, not just up and down, but working from, let's say, this line here up to there. And you can see here how these lines are all starting to lay out pretty good and cover up. It's cutting pretty quick, actually. The reason I'm doing it to the body line is, is I'm filing away here. You'll start seeing it highlight that body line. So it should come out pretty good. I'm not gonna keep going like over the line. I'm gonna stop at the line. close-up so you can see what's happening all right let me get you in here wipe this all off take a look here now this is the darker green is an area we we'll still call a low spot so we still have a little spot here that's where the weld came through came down through so it's probably a little bit of a low divot i put this stuff on super thin maybe show a little more thickness and probably would have had to put more than one pass on but that's not uncommon more than one pass to get your fellow work done this here still needs to be sanded out that doesn't need to be there but as you can see i'm working the box so the block was going this angle and you can see the marks this way and this way and you start to see now that the, the body line is getting highlighted here this is where it was a little bit weak the body line so i need a little bit more in here and a little bit more as for filler right there but it made us use a regular filler but i'm gonna keep doing the same pattern down here and same going back and forth from here's my body line to the body line down here so i keep working at you know 30 to 45 degree angle like this like this until i get it all cut nice and level similar to what you see up top here got the whole thing sanded out top and bottom now uh okay, pretty, this is bare metal bare metal so you can tell very little bit of really super thin now this looks awful in between the two again that gets all cut out and removed and cleaned back up when all said and done so i'm gonna put like a, a coat of regular body filler i don't think any more fiberglass we're talking like super thin amount here to get this thing squared away so same thing i was gonna put a really thin coat down both sides here let that cure and, and sand that out all right i got that second coat of i guess body filler on go ahead and try this uh, sanding block out see how that works that uh, probably probably not we'll go ahead and sand that again we're going to do the the 80 grit sandpaper to knock this thing down pretty quick and make sure we get in the right shape but then we'll see how it looks after that i got it all knocked down with 80 grit looking really good now everything's laying out pretty smooth i'm gonna go ahead and hit it now with 180 grit lay it all out nice and flat then i'm gonna take the sawzall blade here with a pair of pliers and cut this door loose and see what we have there we go. Got the 180 here on my block ready to rock. Um, the thing I want to do is I hit the whole thing here with 180, but I was thinking about something. Normally, I'll do the back and the front at the same time while you've got it glued into place, but 
Uh, I just kind of want to show you how it's done, but normally go ahead and do that too. That's you know, a couple more hours of work that you don't have time to do to learn you how to do this. And that way next time you can do it on your own. I'm kind of hoping to get this all leveled off here looking pretty good. And I'll get my blade here, my sawzall blade, and try to cut this thing loose without breaking it. Now, in order to make that happen, kind of a coarse or wood cutting sawzall blade and a pair of ice grips. And we're just going to kind of slowly file away at this until you finally get it cut free. Now, don't want to get too carried away because this is sharp. It may cause the edge of it to flip up and peel off. So just let it do its thing. And eventually, we'll get cut all the way through from top to bottom. I got it glued there. There we go. There's other ways to do this. I haven't used a cutoff wheel before, but uh, I don't, I'm not feeling that adventurous today. So we'll work it this way, and we'll get there. Now, of course, originally I only glued like two spots, but kind of built up in here and kind of glued the whole thing now, but we'll get it. but that's all the stuff that's kind of squeezed in the inside of the door. So we'll work on cleaning this edge up and you'll see it's very little body filler. Now it looks like it's really bad through here right now. It's only because it's kind of squeezed through the crack, but let's get this sanded down and see what our final product looks like. But that looks pretty good. Now, of course this looks totally 100% awful right now, but you can see what's gonna happen. It's all gonna chip away. So it looks pretty thick through here, but same thing. Gotta file some off that whole edge, but We'll work on sanding all that all off there and you'll see it actually looks pretty clean and uh, this jam probably isn't much different looks kind of caked in here and stuff but we'll get all that sanded out and it should have a nice clean edge now the technique for sanding this off is pretty easy actually there's no block required because we're going to sand down until we see the metal of the edge of the door poke through once we do that we're done It's just some leftover 60 grit I had on my pat block, but you can see the metal poking through now. I'm just sand the inside of the door. Oh, there you have it. it. Looks actually back to original thickness. So very little filler actually built up in here. And so we got some time cleaning up all this extra goo that seeped through though. But uh, to me, it just looks a whole lot nicer when it's done. Has a few extra steps to get this thing squared away. But I think you get the idea here. We'll just file away until you can burn through it. Wow. We'll keep on working on that. It'll probably take about 15 minutes to file all this stuff off, but we'll keep working at it. Okay, here we go. We've got the door all cleaned up and sanded off now. As you can tell, that thickness of the door really isn't perceptibly anything different than it was from the factory. So, super clean edge, shut it here. Looks real nice on the end of the door. Now we just gotta clean up the uh, the door jam part of it here. So I'll take a few minutes, about the same idea. Just take your sanding paper there and just file away until you hit the metal. We're not gonna leave any Bondo or body filler, or fiberglass, whatever built up on this leading edge. It's all gotta come back out. So same thing, take a piece of the uh, leftover 80 grit there, fold it in half, and just keep on working that edge by hand here. Seems to work pretty good. Now sanding this off is the most difficult thing is keep on going until you hit metal on this face here. That's where you stop at. Um, you already have the door jam adjusted or the gaps adjusted before you did this technique. You know, as soon as you hit metal, you're where you need to be. Now you do this to the front edge of the door, the driver's door, front and back. Uh, you could even technically do the trunk deck. I don't typically need to or go that far. Uh, I'm just more interested in how the car looks down the side when you're driving or walking by at a car show. So just about got this here cleaned up and licked. And I'll show you our finished product. And how does it look? Well, I'd say pretty daggum good actually. 
and it all lines up just if the door we had a door latch in with weather stripping you dial that door striker right in where it sits at the exact same height this all is on the same plane now looking really good well there you go all said and done all lines up pretty decent and clean uh, our gap here didn't change we filed all this back to where we could see bare metal again on our leading edge of our quarter panel so again super minimal amount of filler to make this happen but it'll make a huge difference in the finished painted product so um i probably got about an hour and a half between waiting for stuff to dry and sanding on this so far we're not quite finished yet this has a few little blemishes like right here i i slipped with the blade and hit it with a sawzall blade and nicked it but Technically, it's still got some pretty rough sand marks. Probably wouldn't hurt to go ahead and do the finishing putty, go over top of this once. Real thin, thin coat, fill in all the rest of my sanding marks. But other than that, uh, I'll probably go ahead and re-secure this. And we'll do the same trick here to the front edge of the door and the fender. It's not too far off, but I'd like to dial it in just like I did back here. Hey, so there you go. All wrapped up, all said and done. Looking really super nice. Check out this by line. Super clean and lines right up. Same as the one down here and the top of the door. This is why you do this. It just really brings the car to the next level. So when this door is shut, this thing's all painted, it almost looks like the door jam or door gap isn't even there. It's worth it. And look at the amount of filler we put into this thing. Very little to none. It's not like I'm sculpting the car out of body filler and sanding it straight and setting it out the door. We're actually doing it really close. Got the metal close, got as good as we can. I'm not a professional at working with metal. I get by, I do okay. But this is something that you can do. I've clearly done it. It's not that big a deal. Doing a little bit of body work. Yes, you get dirty as heck. I guess you say it's part of the fun. And I got piles of dust down here. So this one is left to the dust. But enough of that. Now what's going to come into play here? Check out this body line. So it looks really super clean and sharp. But let's say it was damaged or it wasn't quite right. How do you get the body line back into this car? Let me show you the front fender. That's going to be our next video. Okay, now you can see that clean body line all the way up to here at this point. But check us out in the front of the fender. It's supposed to be here too, just the same. This is actually taking some collision damage in its life. I've hammered and dollied it out, got it pretty close, but we're just not quite there yet. So how do I get that look back into here? That's the next video. With that being said, this is a, a question that a viewer had actually asked. How do you get that byline back in? Perfect timing. We're gonna be able to do that here for you. Show you how to make it happen. Very minimal filler. I don't like using more than an excess of an eighth of an inch. And I think we can get this job done and salvage this fender and still be under that specification and get that super clean, bright, I guess, sharp body line back. As you can see here, it's just really non-distinct. It's not there. The shape of the fender is here. We got the two planes coming together, but the line just isn't happening. But we're gonna make that happen next go around. Hope to see you guys then, but I've had enough fun today. I'm gonna find me something to eat. Go find me some daggum orange Mountain Dew, and we'll catch you guys next time.